Hey guys, Tokusa here. And with the second anniversary celebration underway and a couple of new units coming out in just a few days, I wanted to make a video on my favorite character that just came out in this game. You've probably already seen it in the thumbnail and in the title, but that unit is Vigilante Deku. To me, this is the, the hypest unit that they've dropped by far. I'm surprised he's not the anniversary unit, honestly. Uh, it seems like they like to keep that tradition of just like original, like, like self-made characters like fantasy units they're only ever in i think like the credit scenes and then this new celebration like the deku and ochako coming out i'm not even too sure where they're from at first i thought it was the two heroes movie but apparently not they have different outfits so i'm not too sure where they came from i mean let me know in the comments below if you know but either way it's original and they can put it on a multitude of characters which means a lot more impact fest so a lot more you know summons to do and more characters to gain so i get it from a business point of view but to me, this is the character that I wanted to go in all for when they announced him. I mean, he's the most badass, man. Like, if you've seen the anime, he's just a one-man wrecking army at that point. He takes all the responsibility on himself and then unleashes a ridiculous amount of beatdown on everybody. And that's exactly what I expected when this character was released. And that is exactly what he does in this game, man. I destroy everything. There were so many times, like, I just I couldn't beat a bunch of events. Like, all these main quests here. I never had any of these three starred, especially the hard stuff. Like, Redestro would just destroy me. This twice battle was a nightmare. This Deku 1212, I, it took me for, it took me till I got this Deku to beat that. It was absurd. I don't know why it was so difficult for me. And yeah, I couldn't be more happy with this character. And as you can see, I, this, I don't do this all the time. I definitely don't max everybody. I don't max anyone, to be honest. I try to get one Duke and that's it. Uh, but this Deku was a very special occasion. Uh, it's what I saved for mostly. I was waiting for a super hyped Deku or a, a Tokoyami. Because Tokoyami is my favorite character. But I guess this game thinks one you are at the beginning of the game is, en is enough. They don't even give us a new SR Tokoyami for some absurd reason. But they gave us this Deku. Couldn't be happier with him. Uh, but yeah. Going to his stats and skills here. Uh, as you can see max trust level max advanced leveling ability board is complete i can show you what that looks like quickly uh basic route done all 13 boards peace route this is what everybody has access to it's just the shards the max level dx peace route you can only really access if you get dupes i think you need three to complete it at the advanced level the unlock level limit and unlock unique ex skill so got that all out of the way uh, yes, this took more than in-game currency. I had to use some new special event that involved like cards and bank loans and tears. And I do not spend it. You can beat this game. You can beat 99% of content and compete with the top end of PVEP without dupes. You only need one copy. Do not do this. I did this just out of pure passion, and I did regret it at first, but everything's good now. So. Uh, skills. Uh, I'm just going to read through his, qu his kit quickly. If you're not too interested, uh, I'll have a time slot in the YouTube video below. Uh, but a quick summary on the character beforehand. Uh, crit is what he lives off and doing attacks to build up his Fodgen. His Fodgen is a big generator for him to do lots of damage output. Once he hits 30, he's basically unstoppable. He takes out everything that stands in his way. He gains piercing shot. He's just a, he's a one-man army. And it's unreal. But to those that want to know his kit a little bit better, that don't fully understand him, I'll go through it. Uh, plus ultra move, Manchester Smash. Deal 650% damage to a single opponent. Medium chance of stunning the opponent for two turns. Fantastic. When character's fan uh, Fajin is 10 or higher, shortens character's action skill cooldown time by two. I'm so happy that this is becoming a thing in memories and characters. It just makes characters like flow a lot better. There's a lot of times when I first played this game, or like in VE Tower especially, there was like two or three turns that I, I just couldn't use anybody's action skill. And I just kept losing turns, losing points off that. Nothing I could do about it. But now that like more characters now are just getting this ability, it's, it's great. It makes everything work so much better. When characters fodge in a 30 or higher, it makes character static. So your plus ultra gauge gains a lot faster, I think, or a lot better. I don't, I don't really know. For eight turns and increases power by 60 percent for eight turns so at this point he's he, you're destroying everything that you look at when a character's fajin is 30 or higher increases character crit rate by 60 percent 
this character gains so much crit rate is absurd. There is there's two other ways he gains crit rate, and then there's memories that you can do that that you can put on him that make him crit more, and characters of course that like, give crit rate to allies. It, this character just it just does so much damage to single attack or to single opponents. Uh, when characters thirty Fajin is thirty or higher, characters Fajin is reduced by thirty. Uh, the main reason for that is there's uh, there's an auto skill below I believe where his skill impact it just gets better by the more Fajin points you have. So I think they're thinking once you hit 30, you're already doing max damage. There's no point for that to keep going. And maybe they're playing it safe for future ability boards. If uh, they ever increase the cap above 99999, that uh, he doesn't just hit that max cap in two seconds. I don't know. I'm not too sure why. Uh, when character's Fajin is less than 30, character's Fajin is reduced by 6. So you have to work a little bit to reach that 30 threshold. First action skill, Black Whip and Shoot style. Deals 450% damage to a single opponent. Medium chance of stunning the opponent for two turns. That's another way to stun. Fantastic. When character's Fajin is 10 or higher, increases crit rate by 40%. So, more crit rate. When character's Fajin is 15 or higher, increases character's critical skill impact by 45%. So, once you hit this 15 Fajin, this is where you'll see his damage go up tremendously. This is where he'll go, in my showcase, you'll see him start to hit the max cap. This is just where he becomes another level, another entity that you just don't want to mess with, and I love it. He, it's saved me in so many events. Uh, and then, of course, every time you use this action skill, uh, Fajin is reduced by 3. Uh, second, second action skill, Overflowing Strength. Uh, so this is another thing about this character that separates him, I think, from the top DPS units, like o or Sue, or the new Ultrakal that's coming out. Her kit looks insane. Or uh, Dobby. The newest one that came out is that they have two things on this deku both their action skills are attacks and they can do aoe attacks this deku is only really good to knock out one enemy and that can be troublesome at times especially with other units if there's like three of them that all just do like overwhelming power this deku doesn't have the highest hp and the highest speed to attack first so he's gonna have to take a hit so not having two attacks definitely does hurt this unit a little bit you have to build around him properly for him to really shine, but if you do that, he can still be very viable. You'll see in my showcases, uh, he is still more than capable of holding his own. Anyways, uh, Overflowing Strength increases crit rate by 30% for 4 turns. This guy just needs more than 500 crit rate, apparently. Uh, increases character's plus ultra gauge by 20%. That's key because his plus ultra gives you the, the 2 action skill cooldown time. You'll see that both these cooldown times are 5, but most of the time your third plus ult you get your plus ultra by your third turn. So these are more like 4 or four turn cooldown times, which is really nice. Uh, character gains 3 Fajin, and the character gains 3 Fajin when you success in, in a successfully executed skill chain, increase effect relative to the number of skill chains. This is important because this is actually how he gains most of his Fajin. Uh, basically how this works is you want him to be the third attacker in your skill chain because doing so and all done obviously properly successfully you gain three fajin per turn or per like attacking order so if you're in that third slot that's nine fajin you gain and then you gain three fajin just for using the action skill so that's already 12 of your 30 fajin just right there very good very nice helps you bail quick uh, quickly and it's very important that he uses a third if you really want this character to do to be your main DPS, to be your main damage output. Uh, first auto skill, going off the rails. Character gains one Fajin per turn, so you're up to 13 after using that this uh, action skill overflowing strength. When character's Fajin is less than 15, crit rate by 25%, even more crit rate. Increase the skill impact by 3% for every one Fajin. So this is why, I think I said it earlier, I'm not too sure, uh, why I think they make you reset it, because I think they just don't want you hitting max every single time because if you can just make this unit live forever I don't know like fantasy or Choco and Karashima around him if you didn't reset it I think you would just one shot everything especially with him resetting his own skill cooldown I think oh Choco lowers like skill cooldown with her plus ultra I think they just didn't want this unit to be overwhelmingly strong which is weird because I feel like he is probably the hypest character they've released in this game but hey not my decision I would have made this character the enemy unit uh, and then his second auto skill, character gains 3 Fajin every 2 critical hits. This is important because there is 2 memories in the game, there might be more, but I know 2 for sure, 
where you can really take advantage of this. And I'll show them shortly during my showcases. When a character's Fajin is 15 or higher, increases character's power by 40 because he didn't have enough power in crit rate. And it gives character piercing shot. So this is why I love this ability. As I've mentioned a few times, one of my most annoying characters out there with like Fantasy Ida is Karishima. He is literally a brick wall. If you don't have a way to get through his like his ridiculous damage reduction there, he is damn near impossible to kill. I mean, it's infuriating fighting him sometimes. And with this character having piercing shot at fifteen or is it fifteen Fa Jin? Yeah. And that's when you get the other power like like uh quirks that this character has. You're just going to one-shot him. There's many times where it takes me a while to get there, or like a couple turns. But once I'm able to have that 15 Fajin and I see the Karashima, I've one-bombed him. I've one-shot that annoying unit out of the game. And it is the most satisfying thing in the game. Uh, My both uh, EX auto skills, I guess I can go over them quickly. Pretty good. Both are about 4,200 battle power. First one is just like damage, 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 of course, uh, based on crits. Character's crit skill impact by 25%, so when I crit, more damage, plus ultra damage up 12, and base overall crit rate by 7, just to solidify critting more, which is obviously good for him building up. And then his defense EX auto skill, happy with this because it's double HP. I feel like this character has very low HP for UR, so I think more HP the better. And then reduces action skill damage to the character by 20% for 3 turns when the wave starts. Like I said, I, the biggest problem I have with this unit, especially with the characters I have, is he, he does tend to get knocked out really early. I don't have a, a, a good cover unit or a good healing unit at the moment. So I do struggle a little bit, but I'm hoping to get this new uh, Celebration Deku. I feel like that will really help this character's problems and make his like longevity just a lot better. But I'm very happy with this EX auto skill. Or this, yeah, the EX auto skill. And then the unique one I got from the uh, the dupe route. This, there's a certain memory I use in PvP that I think really goes well with this. Because at first when I looked at this, I wasn't too happy with it. But now that I have a certain memory, I actually, I love this. I, I live longer. But basically when my HP is below 5%, a uh, character gains resilience. I think that just means I do a lot more damage in my last stand mode. And then I have three last stands. Which is not Persistence. Persistence is a lot better. But that's still three extra hits I can take before I am knocked out. But yeah, that's overall this character's kit. Kind of like how I summed it up at the beginning. He does really well critting a lot. Uh, being the third attacker for this action skill. And reaching that the 15 Fajin makes him a powerhouse. And then reaching 30, you're just an unstoppable one-man machine. Wrecking army. And yeah. Uh, off to the showcase. So guys, now. before we jump into the showcase, I just want to show off the three, the two best memories I believe that are for Deku, the one I use for PvP, and then two honorable mentions. I'm not going to run through the entire like breakdown of them, but the two honorable mentions I have here are Adventure Awaits, which is just a great all-around buffer. Whatever color you have on your team corresponds to the buffs here. As you can see, you get power, skill impact, uh, max HP, crit rate, and speed. I mean, this is an all-around great memory. And friendly reinforcements. This one I think fits Deku very well because he's someone that wants to attack in that third slot, especially when using his one auto skill that gives him the crit rate. Because and the Fajin, because if you're building up your max damage doing it that way, this wants you to do be to be the third attacker to get all these buffs, the power, the defense, and the power plus ultra skill impact. It just it it's very it just meshes really well with Deku. So great memory, can't go wrong with it. But, this could be a surprise to many of you, but the best two memories I believe for Deku are SR memories. Now you're not going to get the mumbo jumbo stats that a, a UR memory will have, but what these do really help Deku's kit overall. And the main thing that they both do, they're very similar, but I'll, I'll go over the differences, is that they let you do two normal attacks. So, uh, close and swordsmanship. When equipped by Yue High Class 1A character, crit rate up 30 by for 3 turns, obviously great for Deku, critting builds his Fajin, and gives him the ability to use 2 normal attacks. And if you can recall what I said earlier, his 1 auto skill, he gains 1 Fajin per 2 crit attacks he does. This just lets you do it for 3 turns, for free. It's literally his normal attack. So, if you're building up Fajin faster, you're going to hit the 15 threshold 
just from your first turn. So by the second turn, you already have your piercing shot, which means you're just going to go right through any sort of damage reduction. And you're going to possibly just hit max damage straight off the bat. And it's just, it's very, very good. Uh, Ragnarok here, Ragnarok Womb, not much different. Uh, gives the ability to use two normal attacks for three turns if wave starts. And then one character can do two normal attacks, increases crit rate by 30 and critical skill impact by 30. So this one, if you're trying to do damage right off the bat, I actually think that this one is slightly better than the other one. And with Deku and how fast he builds up his Fajin, I actually think that this is, yeah, this is definitely the memory to go to. But oh, I think I forgot to read the passive, this third one here. If you think the fight's going to draw out a little bit longer, I could see this one being just as good. Uh, the last part of this uh, memory here is also increases character skill impact by 6% when landing a critical hit up to 10 times. So you're getting just base skill impact up 60% by, by your 10th critical hit. Now, obviously the fight has to go a long way, and I went over that Vigilante Deku does not have the greatest defenses. But I don't know, maybe in a VE tower situation or a big long climax battle, or maybe even just like a really drawn out PvP event. You could, you could definitely hit, reach that max potential of the passive, but yeah, I would probably lean to this as his best memory, for sure. And the one that I use on him in PvP, that I will show in the showcase, of course, is the, a Miner's Assertion. So this just came out with Ojiro's banner. Uh, it was something I really liked. I love the art. I love that Ochako is literally telling everybody about the struggles that Deku's going through and whatnot. It's very fitting, I find, with the character. Uh... So what it does though is gives character ability to make a last stand two times when a wave starts. So as I was going over earlier with my EX auto skill on Deku, the three dodge he can only get when he's under 5%. Pretty hard to do sometimes when some of these units can literally take you out in one shot from 50% health or even higher. But this gives you the last stand right off the bat. So no matter what, right off from the get-go, I know that my Deku is going to get full use out of that EX auto skill. He's going to have the three extra last stands and the two on top of it from just this. That's five extra hits that he's going to have after he's supposed to be KO'd. Five extra lives technically, right? And that has played in a significant fight, like roles for my fights here. I have pulled off many victories just because of that. I've had instances where I got three plus ultras all aimed at Deku. All hit me for like 70k plus damage and I survived and nobody else got hurt because of it. So. This, this is great, just fits my character build very well. And along with that, when HP below falls below 50%, I get a great buff. I get increased power of 35 and speed by 35. And as I've mentioned many times already, it, one of my favorite abilities shortens character action school cooldown by two. Essentially just lets me reuse my two, my, my kick and my build up for Fajin again, right off the bat pretty much. So fantastic memory, works very well with him. And yeah. Those are, the, those are the memories I recommend. Ragnarok Womb, a close and swordsmanship, and then probably for a third if you don't have, obviously, a character like mine, uh, friendly reinforcements. I think that's a really good fit. But obviously, any memory works on a character. Don't have to listen to me. I might be completely wrong, but these are just my recommendations. So the first event I want to showcase is Deku is actually USJ. Uh, type disadvantage, simply just because it's a lot of health, uh, the color's not in my favor, and I just want to show how effective deck can still be in a tougher scenario. Now, I do have Sue here with me just to make sure that I can get through this guy's health bar, but you should still see a very good showcase from Deku. So, we'll start like this. Remember, it's important for Deku to attack third there with that skill so he can build up his Fajin. And I'm using the memory that attacks twice, so he's building it up already. And as you can see, immediately he is at 17 Fajin. So I'm already going to get the piercing shot on this. 12k from Ida is very nice. And right off the bat, 54k. Type disadvantage. Turn 2. Now, obviously, Sue is doing a lot, like I said. But his health bar is just going to disintegrate so quickly here. We'll do plus ultras with everybody. Ida, Ida even hitting 23k. He does a machine damage wise, Sue hitting max. And Deku 66k, and the opponent is. Oh, yeah, I didn't even mention it with his last skill. But he's just stunned. He cannot do anything right now. And this is where Deku's value comes in 
so much, especially in PvE content. Like, as you're gonna see, he, or as you are seeing, he's just constantly stunning, shutting down the enemy. Aizua, he the man that can't use his damn quirks right now. See, he's just constantly getting shut down. Deku now, now that he's building up, it's just getting higher and higher, that damage output. 68k, now I don't think he even crit there. Plus Ultra, and now that he has 30 Fajin, by the way, Aizawa has not hit once this whole fight. Ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And this is what I mean. Like, the value out of Deku in 1v1 battles is just absurd. 90k, and still hasn't been able to do a damn thing. Ah, I love it. I love it. Uh, we're not gonna hit with Sue here, because hopefully we can get the final blow with Deku? Probably gonna be Ida, though. Yeah. That's yeah, okay. But yeah, pure dominance. This is what I meant by like, uh, for like all the PvE content, the story, it, climax battles even, and USJs for me. I was never able to beat it until I got this unit. Oh, nice. And then ever since then, it's just clean sweep. Unreal character. So good. And here is the VE Tower Showcase against the final stage in the Plus Ultra SS difficulty Bakugo. Uh, he can be very annoying. Especially once he gets to his phase where he gets a uh, like last stand mode or whatever you want to call it. But this is where Deku and his stunning ability once again just comes in unbelievably clutch. So what I have on him right now is the memory that does double hits again. And uh, unfortunately I got blinded for that one there. But uh, you're going to see the real value again that comes out of Deku's kit. Which is in this case the stun. Hopefully. Don't let me down. So maybe I didn't hit that much there because I didn't get the 15 podge in because of that blind. Ah, you got me again with it. What an annoying trick. But the main thing you're going to see here, hopefully anyways, is that Bakugo can't do anything. 47k from Ida. Max damage from Deku right off the bat as soon as you hit that 15 podge in. And as you can see, stunned. He cannot move. There's nothing he can do about it. We got a free attack here just for, just for, the, for him being stunned. It's great. And now he's back up, and you might not—you might think he's going to get another attack, but I am very, <laughs> very confident this will stun again. I shouldn't have been. Horrible unit. Don't ever summon for Deku. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Oh, we could plus ultra him, but I kind of want to build up more Fajin. But he's going to hit that—he's going to hit under 50. So I think we are going to actually go for the plus ultra here. Take a little bit of damage. Hopefully the stun kicks in this time. Look at that. 73k. Can't do anything for this whole turn. Let's us build up, which is great. Now, I can't remember if he gets immunity to stun after. So our double hits have ran out with the equipment. Power up. Oh, I don't know if he does, actually. So I think we can actually stun him again, which is what we're going to go for. And you may be wondering why I keep running Ida with him. Look at that. He didn't get the stun, but max damage. Uh, why I keep running Ida with Deku? Well, A, he was... He's completely free to play. I didn't want to like, well, also, hey, I don't have any of the, the best units in the game, but he was free to play. He came out with Deku and he's a good support for Deku. Honestly, just giving him the extra crit rate is just, it's fantastic. It really helps Deku reach that potential a little bit better. And this should be the end of the fight. Beauty. But yeah, as you can see for that first half of the fight, constant stuns over and over again while I'm putting out ridiculous damage output and I'm only getting stronger after each turn, right? Even in those turns where I was getting blinded, I'm still building up my Fajin regardless. And I'm just racking up the damage, keeping him immobilized from doing anything in the game. What do you do, right? And by the time he finally hits his like destroy mode or his last stand mode or whatever you want to call it, like he's constantly just getting hit with max damage every single turn. Uh, and yeah, one thing that I was not pointing out in that video at all, tons of crits obviously, right? Because I'm doing double hits with Ida and Deku with that equipment on, so I'm hitting that. Technical points for me going third in that chain to get the, uh, I forget what it's called, but the max Fajin. Every Fajin is, I believe is technical. Could be wrong, don't take me on that. Take my word for that, but tons of points. Great showcase. He can do everything. Great unit. So now we've hopped into PvP. Uh, I, there was there was a couple of fights that I kind of wanted to take that were a lot easier. But if I'm trying to show this deck off against the meta, or 95% of the game, I wanted to fight Fantasy for the most point. 
Uh, other than like sunflower or chocolate there. Uh, I didn't go. I forgot to show the battle powers at the beginning, but I'm I'm roughly about 420-ish, and our opponent is about 446 or 7, I believe, when I saw it. Uh, as you can see, my team is fully built just to make Deku shine. I'm not using my PvP equipment that I usually run, where it's the uh, the extra last stands. Uh, this is just to show the damage output. Hopefully, we can pull off a victory. And yeah, let's get let's get going. And both of these skills that. Seji and Ida just did are just amplifying Deku. He's gonna crit. Ah, do you see that? You see that damn me lump that's going on? That is why Seji is the greatest character I have ever had in this game. Other than obviously my boy Deku here. His his just disruption is ridiculous. He is turning everybody to meat lump, and it's not for one turn. It's for two. This just gives this unit free roam just to slaughter. Look at that. A whole rotation for free where they can't do anything. And then they're back. It's just... It's beautiful. I love it. And it's it's such Sue down from attacking. So she's not building up her damage that she gets every turn. And Ochako's not giving the team dodge or healing or any of that mumbo jumbo. It's just... It's great disruption. That's what I'm getting at. Once again. Ah, we lost the boy though. That's okay. Deco getting low health, man. See, this is why I like that last man stem... Or memory on him but we should still be able to take out dobby oh <laughs> turn to 73k i don't mind whatsoever uh unfortunately we're not going to get an attack here so um hmm, how should i do this yeah we'll give sue a third slot i get some status ailments going not that anybody really affects me here but who knows who's on that Unfortunately, we're going to have to say goodbye to Deku, but hey, he did his part. He took out two units. Wow, damn. Don't do so well there. Uh, Okay, we're in a little bit of trouble, obviously. But we still got to see a good showcase of Deku. Obviously, my team's not really built to compete with these like top-end meta teams, but all in all, still, still pretty good showing. Oh, Sue, live! Okay, so we're going to get... Ah, uh, they got their skills back. We should still be able to get a pretty good hit here on Alchaco. There ain't no damn way we're going to win, but... As you can see, the meta with these fantasy units is just it's very good. Very, very tough to beat. Unfortunately, though, we are going to fall, I think. Oh, oh. I'm probably just going to cut here. Okay, for the second match, uh, I've changed up the memories a little bit, but still the same team we're using. Uh, so this time, you can see, is my Deku has the memory that gives two last stands off the bat and a huge speed and power boost under 50% health. Uh, with the uh, unique EX auto skill that I got that gives the last uh, three more last stands under 5% health, I just feel like this memory is essential for him to get the most value out of the way that my character is built. Right? Until I reroll that unique EX auto skill, I think this is just the most you know, his best fit for longevity. And we're keeping the same setup, still Ida and Seji there for just support. And then on the uh, on their subs is Sue and Aizawa, just a cleanup. Still fighting fantasy. Just want to, like, I don't really want to, like, showcase the unit against units that are not worse or, like, bad in any sense, but just can't really, like, keep up with the meta. So unfortunately, uh, we should be faster actually with Ida. Okay, good. Uh, this is just going to be another pure build-up turn here, just getting some crit rate. Seji being able to turn everybody to meat lump. Deku obviously getting his stacks. Now, now, yeah, yeah. So Jiro there is going to make sure that we don't turn. Nobody turns into meat turn one because of her status ailment turn one, but that's okay. And here's a big thing: as you can see, the number right above Deku. When you use the memory that does double hits, you already have the 15, because you I think the extra hit gives you the few more fodge in, so I think you have about 17. So I don't get piercing shot, and I don't get the, I think it's like 40% damage buff, because I don't have the 15 threshold, so that's a big, big thing that you have to give up using this unit, is like the quicker build up, as you can see, I think I was like 17k or something on Kirishima there, because I can't pen it, or I can't uh, get through his his damage reduction with the shield there, but 
it's something that I'm totally okay with doing. Mainly because of Seji here. Just being able to slow them down a bit. Unfortunately, they're all meat. Hopefully, we can get a stun here. Big. Did you see that? And as soon as he hits 15, it doesn't even matter. As soon as that was 15, the piercing shot is active. Going right through Karashima like his defenses didn't exist. I love it. Uh, oh, we can't attack other people down. As he's down. Oh, we're going right for Jiro. Um, hopefully, we can meet her. Um, since this is a showcase for Deku, I'll make sure he attacks last. Because he wants to Bob Jin. I should, I should probably have... Ah, stay alive, Tizzy. I should have probably went for Karashima just to finish him off. Because now he's just going to keep healing. Not, not the, uh... Not the greatest play, but that's okay. Deku. Oh, just get out of here. Get that crap out of here. Okay, so we have... Genki on the bench, coming in. Jiro must be hiding. Yep, can't really do much about that. Hiding is such a good ability. That's what makes Sue so good. Makes her the character she is. Uh, fortunately, Seji's probably going to die here. If we're lucky, we should be able to get this off, though. But I think they're just going to array for it. Yeah, he's done for. Oh, don't paralyze. Okay, good. So Seji falls, but e er, uh, Izawa does come in, which would be a nice little touch. Alright, so we have 28 Fajin. Hmm, I should plus Ultra, actually. I wonder if we can take him out in one shot. Imagine. Let's go for it. Oh, <laughs> get out of my game. And that was without a crit, by the way. 78 without a crit. That is, that's ridiculous. And you know what? I think we can actually... Now, usually I bring in Aizawa to shut down Midoriya's because, well, he gets rid of his uh, persistence in his last stand. But I think Deku can, with 23 Fajin, can just take him out before he even activates last stand. Oh, get out of the game, baby! 56k. Pretty good damage still. Uh, I may have definitely over-exaggerated hitting Max all the time. I mean, I know you can do it in PvE content a lot, but I think PvP showcases is a lot more... You know, essential to where you really want to show a character's kit. Now, I'm probably going to knock her out right here. Yep. But yeah, that is Deku in a nutshell. Uh, I don't even think we got to see the last dance activate there. But I was basically at no health. Even if Ochako did her attack, would have, which would hit me like three or four times, I would have been able to survive that, of course, with my last stands. And then we just would have finished her off anyway. So that's why I find more value in that memory. I love it. I think it's great. And yeah, uh, this is just a good showcase to show you that if you build around the character properly, they can shine in any kind of environment. Maybe not like the top of the the top of the league, the top three or, or whatever you want to call it, but he can definitely hold his own ground. Especially, obviously, mine being completely maxed, but any Deku. He's got stunning, piercing shot, and very high damage output. So you have good healers, good cover characters around him, just protecting him over time. He can really shine. And there you guys have it. Uh, that's my showcase on Vigilante Deku. Uh, great. It's just, once again, going over everything I basically said. Fantastic unit. He requires some build-up, of course, and some investment into, of course. Uh, you got to really focus on getting up his Fajin. So he can be a little bit difficult to fit on certain teams, any unit that wants to attack last, because he builds up the fastest, right? Getting that third chain with his skill uh so it could be a little bit difficult to fit in but other than that you saw my showcases there he can take out any sort of event that's even even if there is stun emo like uh he's immune to stuns he still does the damage output to take them all out and then when you can stun it's basically a free run right you're just constantly shutting down your opponent doing maximum damage and then by the time they're able to do anything, the fight's basically over. And then in PvP, as you, as you saw in my showcases there, he can still do great damage. And he still can play a big factor getting in some stuns. But you have to build around him a little bit more carefully in there. As in all my other showcases, I just threw Ida. Uh, I, think I, I think I even did it for the PvP. But in a normal PvP state, I probably would have used somebody more, you know, suitable. Like right now, I would use Aizawa or even maybe Amajiki. Just because of the cover, even though I haven't really vested into him. But just like to help keep him alive a bit longer. 
which is why I'm really hoping to pull that Celebration Deku. Uh, I will probably do a like a short video on my summons. I, I don't know if I can make a whole 10-minute video out of it, but I do have a bunch saved up now. Uh, but yeah, let me know your thoughts. Uh, thank you for tuning in to anybody that sees this video. And yeah, Tokus out. Thank you.